Separating facts from the fear that are out there surrounding so many of the issues that we face in this day and age. And this Q&A really started with the coronavirus and COVID-19. And we're going to continue the case at Q&A on that very subject with Dr. Ruth Bergeron from the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. She's an infectious disease doctor. You've seen the numbers and they continue to rise. How alarmed are you by the rising number of hospitalizations and cases that we're seeing? So I'm, I'm not surprised, but I am very concerned. I'm pleased that our health system is not stressed at this time, that we have the capacity to accommodate patients, we have the personal protective equipment, we have uh, better tools to treat the virus with, but it still could get out of control if we have too many people coming all at once. We can't take good care, we can't take the best care of people if our emergency rooms and our intensive care units are flooded. So we need to continue to work on flattening the curve. I'm not saying we go back to shelter in place, but I am saying that as we've come out to resume our lives and our work schedules, that we have to focus on the principles that we've all learned and that we know so well of masking and social distancing and cleaning our hands. Dr. Ruth, I want to ask you about summer break. You know, so many summer camps and daycares are opening up in full operation, really. And what are some of, some of the things that parents should be considering when they're trying to make that decision on whether or not to enroll their child this summer? Well, first, I think all parents should know that the CDC has released some guidelines for summer camp. They came out about three days ago, and you can go to cdc.gov and you can read all of those in detail yourself. Most of what I've seen on that website relates to summer day camps, and they bring us back to the fundamental principles that we know about how the virus is transmitted and how we slow down that transmission. And remember these questions, how close, how many, how long, and how modifiable. So how, whatever activity you're going to go do, how close are you going to be to other people? How many people are you going to be exposed to? And for how long will you be closely exposed to them? And are there things that can be done to modify those? So those are the basic principles that anybody doing any activity, including summer camp, should think about. But here's some specifics from CDC that are worth taking note of. First, they recommend that when people are going to summer day camp, that the kids be assigned to small groups, so you limit the number of people you're exposed to, and they recommend that they all be from the same general geographic area, including the camp counselor that is with that group of kids. Um, you don't want a counselor coming in from, let's say, a coastal city where there's been a very, very high, high incidence of COVID-19, or if that does happen, you'd like that person to arrive in our area um, well ahead of time and perhaps quarantine for 14 days before going to the camp. So have people be from the same place, generally geographically, have small groups of campers, have the, don't mix them. So, you know, we all know about how uh, summer camp kids kind of rotate from activity to activity, and sometimes that can be with intermingling of different groups. So now for this summer, we're recommending that the same group of kids go around from activity to activity without mixing it up so much. We also recommend that people bring their own food from home, that they keep their gear and their extra clothing separate, and outdoors, outdoors, outdoors. There is uh, about an 18 fold lower risk of getting COVID-19 if what you're doing is being done outside. So to the extent that that's possible in our Texas heat, um, that's something to strive for. You know, the mayor talked today about uh, encouraging people that are in large groups or if you're at a restaurant and you thought it was too crowded, you went to a protest, you went into different places and maybe felt like you came too close in contact with people to get tested. You agree yes. with that? I do. I do. We have growing testing capacity here in San Antonio, and I would say we're not utilizing it maximally. So more people could be getting tested. Why is it useful? If you find out that you are positive, even if you don't have symptoms, you now need to isolate yourself. And the CDC tells us that an asymptomatic person who is COVID positive needs to be in isolation for 10 full days uh, before 
coming out and, and going back to their regular routine. So that's a lot of removing people from circulation and it can cut down the transmission, absolutely. I think for so long we had been talking about the second wave and, and we kind of spoke about it happening in the winter or the fall months. Are you concerned now that we're seeing it now for a third wave to come later on this year? Yes. I mean, I think a lot of experts, if you looked at the models, a lot of people suggested that there would be a second wave in the summer. As soon as you relax the restrictions, uh, you're going to see more cases because the restrictions, they work. And now the thing about the fall is, one, we're going to have people going back to school. So you're going to have a lot more people getting into those um, congregated settings. Two, the way respiratory viruses act, we know from influenza, is that they surge in the fall. So for both of those reasons, we've always been predicting a surge in the fall. Let's do what we can to keep the lid on the current surge. And remember that by the fall, we still won't be widely having a vaccine. Maybe clinical trials um, will be available, but we won't have broad vaccination available. So we're still going to have to be really careful. This is a, an ultra marathon. This is super long distance what we're doing. Yeah, and that's so, the, that's the bottom line. We're not going to be able to relax until we have a vaccine, correct? That's absolutely the case. Another game changer that could come along is if we got a new drug that was really, really effective, um, that we could give people when they're outpatients, when they're not very sick. But we don't, we're not cl really close to something like that right now. So final message, Dr. Ruth, this is not over. This is By not over. <laughs> Any stretch, and I really hope that next time I go out to the mall that I see people wearing their masks, wearing them correctly, covering their nose as well as their mouth, and uh, being diligent and, and maintaining that distancing because so many of our places of business have done a good job of marking off the six-foot interval, but I don't see people necessarily uh, respecting that, and it makes a big difference. So let's go after it. Let's keep it up and let's continue to keep our San Antonio curve flat. I'm with you. Dr. Ruth Bergeron from the UT Health San Antonio Long School of Medicine. As always, appreciate your time. Thanks for staying up late with us. Happy to be here. We'll be right back.